Today in the darkroom, we're printing with Warm Tone Paper and Warm Tone Developer. All right, all right. So my goal today is to get one of those flower pictures that I took, the up close ones that I took when I was out bike riding, and I'm going to print it on Fomatone. This is just an amazing paper, probably my favorite warm tone paper for straight printing. And I have two developers that I like to use with this Foma. One is the Ilford Warm Tone Developer. Now I mix a version of that from scratch. It's called ID78, but it's supposed to be very similar, but you can buy it. So here it is an Adorama. Um, the other one and the one I'm going to be using today is the GAF 135 Warm Tone Paper Developer. This one, the one I'm using today, you would have to mix from scratch. So you're gonna start with 750 milliliters of water, 1.6 grams of metal, sodium sulfite, 24 grams, hydroquinoin, 6.6 grams, sodium carbonate monohydrate, 24 grams, potassium bromide, 2.8 grams, and then you're gonna put water to make one liter. And you're gonna wanna start with that water at um, a little warm, like 100, 105 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's just gonna help dissolve everything, and you wanna mix those in order. Then you're gonna dilute one to one with water, develop two to three minutes, and I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna develop it for a minute and a half. So what I'm gonna do is overexpose and then underdevelop slightly. And in theory, it should give me warmer tones, and it actually does. I've even used regular um, Ilford multi-grade developer and done this with the Foma paper and you get really nice warm tones with it. And that's one of the things I love about the Foma is it's a little bit more responsive to these different developers. And it's got a little bit warmer base tint. And you can even get really steely gray tones out of it too. So it's, it's a great, great paper. And then it also says here, if you want, you can dilute it for more contrast. And then for warmer tone, potassium bromide may be increased up to 5.6 um, grams per liter. Do not exceed 5.6 grams per liter. I don't remember where I actually got this formula. Um, I know I think I pulled it off a forum, but I love the developer and whoever shared this said they usually used it at 5 grams um, of potassium bromide per liter. I've only used it at the standard 2.8, so I have this all mixed up. I have the GAF 135 mixed one to one. Like I said, I'm gonna dilute, or I'm gonna dilute, I'm gonna develop for a minute and a half, then I have a stop fix. So I'm going to go ahead, get this all set up, get my negative in. Now that this is all focused up and ready to go, now I'm going to place my test strip printer. Again, there are directions on how to make one of these in the Way Beyond Monochrome book. Um, but basically, it's, it has one inch strips so that we can just get the test exposure for the highlights because I'm, I'm most concerned about the highlights and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to place this open strip right here on the flower that is my subject. That is where I want the eye to go to. And the flower is actually um, very bright white. Um, they were yellow, but in the black and white print, it's gonna be a very bright white. So that's gonna be the highlight that I want. These, the, the dense spots here, you can see. I'm gonna place that right there. And then I'll also get some shadow detail in this strip too. So that way I can kind of judge the contrast based off the first test strip. Now, Foma paper, is, it's a little slower than like Ilford multi-grade or just regular neutral tone or cold tone paper. So I opened up my lens to F8 and I'm gonna do five second increments and hopefully I'll be in the ballpark with this developer. And again, I'm gonna develop it for a minute and a half. So I'm gonna have to give it a little more exposure. And then as I pull it out of the, the developer, I'm going to make sure I, I'm very accurate with that time and then I get it in the stop right away. And that way that will halt the development and it hopefully won't quite be fully developed and that's going to give me a nice warm tone. All right, so now I've cut one piece in half. Everything's set up. So I'm just going to simply put this in here. And then with resin coated paper, it fits in here a lot nicer. Um, so I just kind of get it as close as I can and then squish this down. And then I have this taped in place so that it doesn't move around on me. So the first one I'm going to give it is five seconds.
range of tones in there. So I think we did pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is to dry this with resin coated paper, a lot of times I will just use my hair dryer. Fiber based, it's much quicker, so I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave. And what I do is I will put it in, usually, usually it takes like a minute, but I put it in bursts of like 10 seconds. So I'll, I'll start it for 10 seconds and I'll stop. Then I'll put it, then I'll start it for another 10 seconds and then I'll stop. That keeps the paper from like molting and you'll get some funky colors. If you, if you just, if you blast it in there for too long, I've had some weird things happen. And it looks like we did pretty good. This is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. For highlights, I'm really looking at just above, 50, between 15 and 20 seconds, I really like. You can judge contrast by this as well. Say you really like the blacks here, but you like the highlights here. That means you gotta add contrast. If you like the highlights here and, and the blacks are good here, that means you gotta lessen the contrast. But right now I'm at a filter, a two filter. I, I, like, every, I like the blacks here, here, and here. I'm just gonna stay at a two. And if I wanna go softer, I can. If I wanna go harder, I can. But once things dry down and everything, I, I think I'll probably still end up at about a two filter. I did go evaluate this in um, normal daylight and then in mixed lighting. And I like to look at it in a couple different lighting environments as if it were gonna be on my wall. Um, but that's generally how I view. Instead of just using one set of lights, I like to put it in kind of um, real world situations. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna do the first full print, 16 seconds. Actually, I'm gonna go, cause that was at F8. I'm gonna go 32 seconds at F11. So those are the settings I'm gonna use for my first test print. I love this paper so much. I mean, it's just got that that warm base. I don't know. I just love the tones of this paper and and this warm tone developer and the other warm tone developer, and they give slightly different results. But I love them both. I don't know if there's a lot I'm gonna do except for dry this in the microwave, look at it under different lighting situations again, real quick. Just kind of walk around with it for about a minute. And then, I mean, my initial plan was to dodge this out more and do an edge burn. But right now, I really want to get a gauge on the contrast. The highlights to me are perfect. Everything gets drawn right there. And a lot of it is because I did that initial dodging. Because remember, if you watch that other video, I dodged the sun from hitting the background here and still let the sun hit the light. And then this was naturally being shaded. So there was sun like coming across here all the way in the back. So this was really bright and I used the reflector to dodge that in the background. So in, in essence, I did the dodging while taking the picture, but, or I did the burning should say, dodging on a negative, burning on the picture. But I still think I might fade this down just a little and maybe dodge this for like a second or two and possibly a little more ink. Uh, contrast. But what I have to do now is dry this in the microwave and then just take, take a good look at it and then from there I'm going to judge and see what I want to do. another test print and it's still a little bit wet but what I did was I did up the contrast a little after evaluating the other one in the light I had kind of a happy accident happen I had only set the timer for 30 seconds so on this particular test print I had upped the contrast and up the exposure a little bit and I had actually upped the exposure a little bit too much but I set the timer for 30 seconds and when it stopped I was kind of like beside myself and 
because it didn't seem like a minute and a half, clearly. And so then about 45 seconds, I, I still took it out because I thought I had waited too long and I stopped it. So I gave this one only 45 seconds in the developer and after I fixed it, it is exactly what I was going for. It's perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. Uh, a lot of people will probably say, no, you can't do that, you can't develop for that, that short. Um, to that I say, I just did and I love it. So yeah, so one of the things that I really, really love about this paper, probably gonna be a little bit hard to see, trying not to get the, the reflections in there. Because it's such a warm tone, this paper, it actually goes kind of to the greens and it's really, I think it's a really, really cool look just as is. Now I'm gonna selenium tone it and that's gonna bring it over to the reddish browns and it's gonna take the selenium toner really, really well. I am gonna keep one of these untoned so that you can see the comparison. I'm just in love with the way these, these tones are. I made a final print map too. So with this one, what I did was I, I dodged some of these flowers a little bit more. So I took a picture of it up on my viewing board. Let me see. So the final print that I'm gonna make here, hopefully, is going to be at f11 with the 105 millimeter lens, seven by seven print, filter two and a half, GAF 135 developer one to one, developed for 45 seconds. And then I did a three second dodge on these flowers and then kind of went around again and did just two seconds and, and moved it around a little bit in that area for six seconds total and just kind of stopping briefly two, two, two. Then I did a little bit of an edge burn where the flowers and the highlights were and then I actually did a slight corner burn with a zero, zero filter because there's just that highlight on the corner and I wanted to just burn that down but I didn't want it to be noticeable on the blacks. And then I'm gonna go through and do a couple experiments with the selenium toner. But like I said, I'm really digging this and happy that I accidentally only developed that for 45 seconds. You can experiment and play around in the darkroom and sometimes things just turn out amazing and that's what happened here. I did, and I, I knew that I could do this and what you have to be careful of is uneven development at really, really short development times. And I, I had done a, a portrait of my daughter a while back and the developer was only 30 seconds. Because this is 45 seconds in the developer, I basically take this right from the developer into the stop. I don't even let it drain. I just wanna let it sit in there as long as I can for 45 and then just throw it in the stop. Now that's gonna exhaust your stop bath really quick, but if I get a print that I love, I'm okay with that. So now I'm gonna make the final print um, and I'll, I'll walk you through that and we'll develop it and then we'll do some, some toning on it and I think we should have a, a really beautiful print. Base exposure is 34 seconds. I'm at filter two and a half. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of dodging on these flowers. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm gonna do a little bit of an edge burn. So I'll just leave that at 34 seconds, block it with the card. I'm gonna bend the card up because I don't wanna go into that other area. And then I'm gonna go one, two, three. One, two, three. And this corner, one, two, three. Now I'm gonna go all the way down to zero, zero. Kick this on and off. And then these, there's some little highlights right here that I just wanna knock down. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And that should do it. Let's get this in the developer. Now I set the timer for 50 seconds. And I'm gonna start it and then drop it in as soon as it hits 45. And I wanna get this all over the paper as quickly as I can. Cause like I said, I'm only developing this for 45 seconds. And so this is gonna be really a quick, quick under development. And I'm just gonna throw it right in the stop bath. Not even gonna let it drain. That will definitely eat your stop bath quicker. But like I said before, I'm okay with that if I'm getting a print that I love. So then when there's about five, there's about 10 seconds, then I just grab it by the corner and I'll agitate it actually by hand. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I have the final prints all made, the next step is gonna be to selenium tone them. I'm using selenium toner one to nine, and I'm using Ilford's selenium toner. I guess one other thing to point out, so I have a, a water bath, I took them out of the wash, I washed the prints for 15 minutes, um, then I took them out of the, the, my print washer, put them in a water holding bath, and this is the selenium toner, and then I have a water bath. I'm gonna rinse them briefly, and then I have the, the sulfite bath here, and the sulfite's gonna stop any um, further toning. And then I shuffle them in there again, and then I give them another final wash. I'm gonna shuffle the prints in the HypoClear one more time, give them a final wash, squeegee them, and put them on the drying rack. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Here is uh, the selenium toned image. And here is the non-selenium toned image. And here are those two side by side. This was a lot of fun for me. I love it when things, you know, when you have an accident in the dark room and it turns out that is, is something that is always a bonus. So don't be afraid to experiment and try new things, make mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we get good prints sometimes. It's just the way it is. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment down below and that's gonna do it.